So we'll take a look at the Vamos system today on the S85 motor. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, what's the Vanos system? Well, it's BMW's own version of variable valve timing. So it uses these two units, one here on the front of the cylinder heads on each bank, one there. Has some all driven pistons in there, two in each side. And that adjusts the cam timing, which in turn varies the valve timing. Okay, so that's what the Vanos is. So how does it work? Right, so we've got a Vanos high pressure oil pump down the front of the engine there, down the bottom, and that's pumping high pressure oil through these lines here to each unit. And each unit's got two oil driven pistons in there. And with the oil pressure, they move backwards and forwards and that adjusts the cam timing and the computer manipulates them via the use of solenoids and there's two in each unit, two in each side there, just at the bottom of the unit. So the computer can control the exact cam timing that it wants. The Vanas pump is a gear driven pump and it does run at high pressure, approximately 80 bar. Okay, so we now know what it is and how it works, but why have it on an engine? Well, most modern vehicles have some form of variable valve timing but it's especially important on an engine like this so obviously this is a very high revving high horsepower engine looking at 507 horsepower it revs to over 8000 rpms so by the very nature of the engine it's built for that top end high revving power now if the valve timing was fixed and the computer was unable to vary it the car would just be about undrivable at the bottom end you know just cruising around town uh, driving at slow speeds and um, any engine would idle pretty rubbish also it wouldn't run very nice down the bottom end so the whole system's designed to make the car run nice and smooth down the bottom end give it a bit of bottom end power make it idle nicely so if you're just cruising around town driving at them slower speeds the car drives nice it's comfortable to drive but also you've got that big power at the top end okay so what are some of the common problems with these s85 engines from the systems now one of the first things most people notice is the noise that it makes. It does scare a lot of people, especially if you just bought one of these cars, you think, oh geez, this does not sound good, eh? This doesn't sound right. But it's worth just taking some time to understand the system. Now as I say, that Vanos pump down the bottom of the engine there, it's gear driven, not tra chain driven. And each cam's got a gear on the front of it, on each side. Now the intake side cam, that's chain driven, but the exhaust cams, they're gear driven off the intake cam. So obviously you've got them gear teeth meshing together, so by the very nature of the design, it's going to make some noise. So the best way to describe it is it's a bit like the old Chevy small block engines. That's obviously got a timing chain at the front of the engine, but you used to be able to get a kit that was a gear driven kit to replace the old chain setup. And if you've ever heard a Chevy small block operating with one of them systems, they're pretty damn noisy compared to the chain. So it's the same sort of idea here. By the very nature of the design, it is noisy and some noise is to be expected, especially when the system's cold. As it warms up, normally they get quieter. Now on the earlier engines, the exhaust gear on the front of the camshafts was a slightly different design to the later engines and they are known to make quite a bit of noise. So the earlier ones, even when the oil's hot, even when the engine's hot, they will make a, a fair bit of noise. The later design they changed, I think, around uh, 2006, 2007, so the later engines are quiet. So if you've got an early one and it's making a bit of noise from this area here, just that gear-driven sort of whining sort of rumbly noise, I wouldn't be too concerned. Now obviously if the whole system's sort of banging and clattering and making some awful noise, then that's going to require some investigation. But with these being a, such a highly strung motor, the engine monitoring system that's done by the computer is very, very sensitive. So if, if anything's just slightly off, it's going to let you know, it's going to throw a code, it's going to give you reduced engine power, limp home mode, so it'll soon let you know. So as long as all your Vanos solenoid tests look good and there's no codes and it's running nicely apart from a bit of noise I wouldn't be too worried about it you can often reduce the noise or get rid of it initially by bleeding the Vanos system now you need to do that with the likes of 
ISTA D or the likes. And what that'll do is it'll program it to run through a whole cycle to bleed all the air out of the system. It's obviously you want to do this if the system's been opened up for repair or maintenance, whatever. So often you'll have to do that sort of two or three times, maybe even up to five times to get all the air out. So if there is a bit of noise there, it will reduce that noise, but more often than not, especially with the earlier design exhaust cam gears, that noise will return later on. You can also change out the cam gear for a later model, and that'll probably eliminate that noise uh, once the engine's hot. But again, you can be throwing thousands of dollars at this, and ultimately the noise might more than likely return. So my advice is, as long as you're not getting any codes, as long as the Vanos performance test is all good, I just learned to live with it. It'll soon let you know if there's any real problems. Okay, so next thing to watch out for is the Vanos solenoids. Now solenoids by their very nature do fail over time, but that failure rate and the lifespan of the ones on these engines is accelerated. Normally because what happens is as the rod bearings wear, or if they fail later on from insufficient warm-up procedures what happens is you get that wear material that small metal particles getting suspended in the engine oil and then that gets pumped around the whole system and over time if the oil is not changed regularly the amount of particles in the oil builds up and builds up and then you've got it all floating around the whole system suspended in the oil goes through the Vanos system what it does it gets captured in the solenoids and then it acts like a grinding paste and that just accelerates the wear in there and causes all kinds of issues later on that's another reason why it's really important with these engines that you change the oil really frequently keep it nice and fresh if you're suspecting any problems with your rod bearings you want to be getting them changed out as soon as you can and if you have recently had your rod bearings changed something that you don't want to overlook is the amount of wear particles that are going to be sitting throughout your Vanos pump, throughout your whole Vanos system, each unit, the solenoids. So you want to be thinking about getting that flushed out as best you can, whether you use an engine flush, you're probably far better off just doing two, three, four oil changes very close together. Just get it as clean as you can. And the solenoids on these engines are reasonably expensive also, but you can run a performance test, like I say, through Hister. Or the likes. Another thing that can fail on them is the O-rings that seal it to the Vanos unit. Now these can become hard and dry, crack over time due to the heat cycles of the engine and then it creates a small oil leak, oil weeps and that's going to affect your Vanos performance also so that's worth checking out. Now another very common issue with these engines is the high pressure Vanos oil line the main one which sits at the front of the engine right down the bottom but it sits inside the sump so it's a real pain in the ass to change now on the earlier engines the earlier design it's almost like that hose was a little bit short because it's a very stretched in its position where it's bolted in and what can happen over time is the crimps on either side of the high pressure hose it's like a hydraulic hose they can give a wee bit and then what starts happening is the oil starts weeping, starts leaking and then you start losing the oil pressure and if you don't have enough oil pressure, if you're not running at that 80 bar that's required with this system then it's going to cause all kind of issues so that's something you can do a pressure test by fitting a gauge here just be mindful of the pressure that you're dealing with if you do go down that route but like I say that hose is a pain in the ass to change, it's a sun puff job it's certainly something you want to consider changing out if you've got the sun puff to do the rod bearings it's a no-brainer and also if you're in there having to change the hose because it's failed because it's leaking it's weeping then consider doing your rod bearings while you're in there also and as far as I'm aware that hose design was improved later on so if you're buying the modern version now it should eliminate a lot of the issues that that caused in the early days with these engines now another issue to watch out for is the Vanos gear pump itself the high pressure pump the one that we talked about right down the bottom at the front of the engine there like I say, it's a gear driven pump, not a chain driven pump. Now on the earlier designs, that gear profile was quite shallow and the way the gears meshed wasn't that positive. On the later design, I think they changed it oh, around 2007, 2008, something like that. And the gear had a much deeper profile, the gear teeth. 
and they meshed much more positively so that can cause some issues on the earlier design but then on all of the pumps they have like a big bearing race inside of them and what can happen the same with them rod bearing wear particles if your rod bearings are wearing and you're getting them wear particles floating around in your engine oil like we talked about with the solenoids the same thing it can damage the bearing race in the pump it can cause issues with accelerated wear and then that's going to cause issues with the pump itself and they are reasonably expensive to replace so that's another reason just to keep your engine oil nice and fresh keep up with them regular oil change intervals the bearing itself isn't serviceable there's no replacement parts available for that so you'll end up having to get a bearing custom made which is going to be expensive or replace the pump which is going to be really expensive and again if you're in there down the bottom end of the engine with the sun puff replacing your high pressure oil vanus hose or the rod bearings it's worth just pulling that pump apart and just checking it out checking the bearing checking the teeth profile make sure it all looks healthy before you put it back together okay so that's pretty much the top and bottom of the system and like I say as far as that vanus noise goes unless the noise is making a real big sort of banging clattering noise real grinding grunching if it's sounding horrible if you're throwing any codes if your vanus performance test is coming back with issues then you want to be investigating further but a little bit of noise is okay especially on the earlier engines the earlier design even when it gets warm a little bit of gear noise i wouldn't be too concerned about it like i say you can end up throwing thousands of dollars at this problem you might reduce the noise a bit usually more than likely comes back so don't be too concerned but just make sure you pay attention to what's going on and one of the biggest takeaways from this video should be that you'll really extend the life of your whole Vanos system just by regular oil change intervals just, just taking a notice of whatever the ride drive says then big long oil change intervals that BMW recommend you want to be getting it done as regular as you can keep it all nice and fresh keep them particles down if there is any in your oil and right there's always the argument that oh we're using synthetic oil it lasts a long time you can go along oil interval changes with it which is true especially on um, some of the other BMW engines but even with that synthetic oil okay it does go a long time without breaking down oil still condensates over time and also if you've got wear particles in there long oil change intervals aren't going to do that any good so just get it changed out as regularly as you can and she'll be all good okay if you're finding these videos interesting or useful you're enjoying them don't forget to subscribe i'm mtech guy thanks for watching